Or something. Come along, you bussy swam now. The land told me, Sally Kangalubum Nan, the Bobu Bomi. The land told me, as I went sick and obeying Tony, the intomb in a hard life story, got an infuno story, the Funundas bound on the land told me, Sally Kangalubum Nan, the Bobu Bomi. The intomb in as I went sick and obeying Tony, the intomb in a hard life story, got an infuno manu story, and Funundas bound on I'm a woman. My body belongs to my family, which tells me where to go and when. My body belongs to the boyfriend who's led me into sin. My body belongs to the Lord I serve. I want to go to heaven. Someone told me Jesus died for my sins was given. What I really want to do is live my life. Let it mystify before I die. Not spend my years asking why, but just to go out there and try. But because I belong to friends and relations who even determine my determinations, who try to dictate my realizations just to create their idealizations, I cannot live for myself. I cannot grow like a free stem because I am not me, you see. My body belongs to them. I want to make an impact. When I walk into a room, but I cannot do that if I have been deprived of my right to freedomation. I cannot rise to every challenging occasion. I cannot help to develop this nation. But what I can do always is impart my strength to those whom I care to, those whom I gave birth to, and those I gave myself to for better or for worse. My sisters of better times, even if they now curse this woman behind her back saying she did deservedly drowns in deep troubles. For what is life without them? I understand them, the troubles, but I cannot stand under them. They cannot break the spirit of this rock. Matter of fact, I don't know who went around calling us dead, lifeless rocks. I'm beyond a rock, and I'll tell you why. Rocks tend to tumble downhill. I climb up steep emotional mountains and overcome them. Rocks get sanded by waters in a moving pond. I face my troubles. I respond with unmovable firmness. Rocks fall to pieces when the climate is harsh. In the harshest of times, I become the strength of those around me. And lastly, honey, rocks will never endure the pains of childbirth. I am more than a rock, motherfucker. I'm a woman. I'm a bad bitch. I am a diva. I am Her Majesty the Queen. I am ugly. I am divine. I am crazy. I am fine. I am a W.O. man. I am a well-organized man. I am a woman. Molueni, Sangonan, Sena Mugela Futsuke Sini Iskotuse Affluent in Democracy Dialogues. Ika Malango Amanda Zuma, Umsholozo Kamalai, Umatomela Gata, Juma Pumepeti, Amasi Gafa, Inyama Gafa. Mina Agengu Uspashe Kwela Umga Bazu Ndulu Stukus Asosio. We welcome you to yet another episode of the Art Fluencing Democracy Dialogues in partnership with the State Theatre. This is episode 7 of Women in Heritage. By the middle of 1956, plans had been laid for the Pretoria March and the Federation of South African Women had written to request that J.G. Sturdom, the current Prime Minister, meet with their leaders so they could present their point of view. The request was refused. The biggest struggle... Um... For me, Namand is still rights, yeah, inequality, yeah, well, and gender based violence, obviously. Give us more, more, 
um, spaces for us to express ourselves. Obviously, in Gege Baslalele, when we do express ourselves, but then it will make some sort of a difference. Would see Bazori later when you when it's women talking, yeah, well, to express ourselves and our beliefs and last sort of code and, you know, give us equal rights. The ANC then sent Helen Joseph and Bertha Mashaba on a tour of the main urban areas, accompanied by Robert Resha of the ANC and Norman Levy of the Congress of the Democrats. The plan was to consult with local leaders who would then make arrangements to send delegates to the mass gathering in August. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know how, but I think, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. You know, at the moment, the, 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 the artist is, is still so dominated by males. So uh, how we've changed it, I don't know. Because they bring a different dimension, different texture, uh, 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 different voice from the norm, which is not the norm. I don't know why. I don't understand why men are the norm and women are not. Um, because I think even from the start, there's always a man and a woman, or a boy and a girl. Um, you know, it's like whiteness. Whiteness uh, <laughs> assumes norm just like males. So anyway, I think, uh, yeah, we bring, we bring texture, we bring uh, uh, a different voice or, or, or a feminine voice or a feminist voice, which is still important. I'll probably just think, you know, by doing um, Women's Month, it's enough. But it should be a norm. I mean, for me, it's disappointing that, you know, I'm 52 years old and we're still screaming this. <laughs> it's a boring subject. It's like, I've been here already. Uh, you know, what does it take for them to uh, acknowledge us? You know, why are men still fighting against women? I mean, there's so many wars <laughs> on earth, you know, that they can, you know, take over instead of fighting against women. Uh, Yes. Uh, what can it doesn't start at a professional level. It starts from, you know, uh, formal schooling, or from even when girls are raised, or actually even boys. How boys are also raised, uh, uh, because you know you don't gain confidence when you become an adult. You have to have confidence when you're young or given given the support when you're young you know it doesn't start when you when you are grown up so that's where it needs to start to start it needs to start at the school level it needs to start uh, you know when girls are at primary school high school you know university by the time they reach university they should have confidence also to you know to be who they want to be uh, and be given opportunities and this, for me, it's how we raise girls, you know. Uh, of course, if you tell a girl that, you know, their destination is to get married and, uh, and, and look after children and men, then of course, uh, you know, how is that person going to imagine that one day they can be a CEO or be in charge of whatever, or be in charge of themselves, <laughs> you know, or in control of themselves. Imasha besfazani yaba imumele linkulu. Abesfazani basuga guzo zonke zinkenye zeningi zim Afrika. Abanye basuga zindawene zgu dezfana ni Cape Town ni Port Elizabeth. Okay, um, I think the biggest struggle my women face at the moment is the constant having, the constant having to uh, prove their stance or capacity um, in this man's world because every, every, every uh, high position seemingly um, is given to men because they are thought to be more capable than women. So um, I think what women struggle with the most, most is continually proving their 
um, capabilities towards um, things around the world and how much more they can actually influence and bring to the table uh, more than men. Okay, um, I don't think the country should be doing anything else to protect women because I think um, their uh, tries on, tr on trying to protect women have failed in terms of the human rights and the constitution uh, involving human rights and, and, and um, how, the, how life is supposed to be in terms of uh, the legal laws of, of the world. I think what must be done is ways to punish um, or the perpetrators or the uh, rising if, uh, problems with issues that tend to uh, to be giving you the question of how to protect women. I think it's more in terms of how to be able to uplift women and uh, protect them from these people or these um, uh, perpetrators that make a uh, woman's lives uh, impossible. So it's more uh, if they could focus on how to deal with the issue rather than to just react and protect women, I think that would be a little bit better. Uh, I think heritage affects women in terms of um, not being able to give women um, enough space to grow or voice out their opinions and um, information or uh, observations towards how life is supposed to be. I think in heritage, uh, especially in terms of not allowing women to fulfill their capabilities in around the spaces. Um, according to our heritage, women are supposed to be submissive, supposed to follow the head of the family, which is supposed to be male. And I think that limits us and even, um, the, the, um, what's the word? A disadvantages as in our workspace, personal relations, and schooling wise, that women will always be underneath men. So, if our heritage could give us space a little for women to be able to um, show their capabilities, I think we will be able to accommodate each other more. Estimates of the number of women delegates range from 10,000 to 20,000, with FSAW claiming that it was the biggest demonstration yet held. They filled the entire amphitheatre in the bow of the Herbert Baker building. Neither the Prime Minister or any of his senior staff was there to see the woman. So as they had done the previous year, the leaders left the huge bundles of signed petitions outside J.G. Sturdum's office door. It later transpired that they were removed before he bothered to look at them. Then, at Lillian Goye's suggestion, a masterful tactic, the huge crowd stood in absolute silence for a full half an hour. Before leaving, again in exemplary fashion, the woman sang Osisigelele Africa. Without exception, those who participated in the event described it as moving and an emotional experience. The FSAW declared that it was a monumental achievement. When a, when a woman is standing up, you know, standing up to rights, standing up to arts development, um, it's something new and something that people actually long for because we've been dying to hear new voices. And I mean, we know where this country is coming from. We are coming from a space where we were not so objective, you know, but then we have carried this thing of women standing up, women seeing about freedom, women standing up to gender-based violence. And almost these movements as well that we are seeing going around, especially in social media, they've really just made us more powerful and we are seeing them speaking out to violence. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing them not being afraid into talking about these things into the public space. We are, we are getting there, you know what I mean? I won't say that we are here yet, but I would say that we are getting there. And I think that it only begins when um, we start to accept the power that is within us. And uh, we let go of the fear that has been instilled on us, if you get what I mean. I think for me that uh, the day I decided that, okay, I'm taking this power, I'm taking this woman power, and this is what I'm gonna carry with me. Everything has been so easy because I think people appreciate when a person does that, because now it reads that I know myself, I know who I am and I know what I'm about. So no one can try and mess up with me because don't, 
you know what I mean? It's a matter of saying that we need to know that the power exists within us. Nobody can give it to us. And since it's within us, nobody can take it away from us. Nobody can take the talent. Nobody can take the voice. You know what I mean? And that has been my greatest strength. And wherever I've went with my craft and my music, <clears throat> they've really just shown that appreciation. Which, you know, we see this person, they know who they are. You can't tempt with that because I don't shiva. I don't shiva because I know this kind of woman that I am. And I know the people that I've looked up to. And when we see each other, we respect each other. They, they are no... There are no rules with it. We just celebrate, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, things have changed to be honest, yeah. I feel like uh, there's a lot of reshaping of uh, structure that needs to be done, first of all, within our government system, you know what I mean? And I think that um, the whole thing of cabinets and who ministers what and what and what it's still just all over the place you know what i mean for me i just feel like that the the youth needs to rise first because now the youth is coming up with these ideas of for the future you know i feel like what is still happening now there's still a lot of things that are in the past that are still happening i think that more power needs to be given to the youth whether it's men or females because now they understand that we are coming from this generation of wanting to take freedom, of wanting to speak, of wanting to change um, other people's life, of wanting to educate girls to not fall into the traps that our parents did, you know, because they did not have the education that we have. I feel like our government, you know, I feel like if they can just go deeper into really just putting on the youth into the government space and give them the chance to say, okay, this is what people want. But also, you know, that uh, to actually get the chances of doing something, you have to knock. So I think that women also need to knock. I think also our educational system is not teaching us to knock. It is teaching us to wait to receive as if someone knows what we are thinking. I think that also our education system needs to teach us that if you want that opportunity, this is how you can do it. By now, we don't have those resources that are teaching us the actual things that are supposed to give us money after. You find that we finish school, but we still have to go job hunting only because I'm aware that I should write a proposal to the government, but then nobody has taught me how to do that. So it takes me another two years to actually come up with a proposal, get people to help me with the proposal, just to write a proposal when I have two degrees, but I do not know how to do that. So if this education structure can change just a little bit to accommodate us with the skills to use after the degree, that will be so great. And not only that, but also have the, 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 the school programs as well, whether it's two months to say, okay, um, what can can we call few women into the art space let's just uh, see what they can tell our youth because now we go to school we want to study bachelors of arts we don't know what it means uh we don't know who has succeeded from doing it you know what i mean so that's why we, we lose interest you know what i mean if we can just say okay first years we are calling this artist and this artist they're going to tell you they started here uh so our government has, has sponsored them to come um our government has, you know, sponsored food, pets, whatever that needs to be done. Let's educate what it is that we are getting ourselves into before we find out that, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with the BA arts when I can't write a proposal for the government to give me the money? So where am I going to work? The FSAW and the Congress Alliance gained great prestige from the obvious success of the venture. The FSAW had come of age politically and could no longer be underrated as a recognized organization, a remarkable achievement for a body that was barely two years old. The Alliance decided that 9 August would henceforth be celebrated as Women's Day, and it is now in the new South Africa commemorated each year as a national holiday. Ngalolo suku kukuzelo wongu muntu kuba toko zila masiga ngagubo. Iga kulga zinjengo ba sinez ngolelo na masiga shugeni la peningizim Afrika.
just talked about in South Africa is gender-based violence and um, yeah, maybe not being afforded the same opportunities just because we're a woman. Yeah. So I think what the country should be doing, I think they're currently focusing more on uh, what's written instead of what's been done practically. So. Uh, more security and just yeah in terms of more people looking out for for women like in terms of the police and everything yeah instead of written, writing stuff down do actually doing what's written down yeah um i think heritage can be actually used in a very good way especially in south africa and it's for me personally, and I know for lots of my friends, can bring a sense of learning about other people and also, yeah, in learning about other people, it unifies people as well. Gwazulu usugula mashuma mabili na negu mandulu lalwa ziwa njenge shaka dey. Okwagu izkumbu uzo senkosi ea gea busi sizwe sama zulu, ushaga zulu. Mtlagu paranyisu mkulu ama holiday nga pam goguti in New South African Parliament ilu susi lulu sugu, ishaga dey. Ingata Freedom Party ea ziwa njenge kembulezo mbu sazwe eli na malu nga maningi anga mazulu. Ya pigi sana na lesu ngumu. Kwa besek tiwa maklanga ne paratike lu tatu lulu sugu luenziwe olu nga kutwa iningizim Afrika yonke. Women have changed the arts simply by enduring by being there and staying, being visible and voicing what they are going through. Women have been strong, so they are role models by, simply by, by staying there in the arts without a lot of support. S situation that doesn't really serve them well so they have helped the arts by making sure we have arts to talk about women in the arts how many times do you hear of a legend whose life ends and then people have to put their pennies together to help bury it yes Women have served the arts simply by staying put and voicing their, their suffering. African narratives are crucial, not only for our survival as Africans, but for our history. We are the stories we tell. If we don't tell our stories for ourselves and for those who will be when we are long gone, who can tell our story be better than we can? Our story told by ourselves to ourselves. Which brings me to the importance of narratives is important for us. It's good to export it, but we should pay heed to our stories. And women do not receive the support they need and deserve. They are always left behind. When there's anything happening, they are the last to know. Because who is at the top? Who is dishing out the goodies? Who is saying what's available? Not women. So women need to also be in positions of power and be paid attention to. Ekuluma maelana ni Heritage Day ngo 1996. Owayengu mungameli wagleli unelson Mandela wati. 
Jengobu hulmeno musha wintando yenini. Esebega i Heritage Day. Jengo sugu olunga tagaselua iningizim Afrika yonke. Ushoswe ukarambi sukusuga na wetu. Kupinde kwa kiwe iningizim Afrika encha engono. I South African State Theatre izala inganye balegile ekwa keni zimkundleze segi mbono ya banbe sifazane gwezo kutuigo. Ya begwa njenge zikungo sezo kutuigo nga pansi gwe Cultural Institutions Act No. 119 yangu 1998. Umpati wale zikungo utogote la sibong seni mkize eba msene no mkondi isi wezo kutuigo uo prisikabi. Basu ngula uselu labe sifazane, uguze gubunga azwe futi kukuli iswe umkaka wezo glingisa eningizim Afrika. Ono mvula mluga ungu mpati numelegele liwe hovis no mkonde suwezo kigo e South African State Theatre. We are so privileged that we actually do not need a month um, to identify both gender and heritage. Um, as a South African state theater, we stand on the pillars of very strong women. Our chairperson, Professor Figile Mazibuko, is a woman. Our deputy chairperson, uh, Dr. Joy Nzovu, is a woman. And various other council committees are headed by women. So we definitely are very much um, a, a, an organization and an institution that values the contribution of women um, and also then that is also espoused in terms of the gender parity. Then the heritage aspect of it is carried by, you, you, you would know that the, the women who marched to the union building were very much intentional about espousing and carrying forward every struggle of the community um, that, that would have been prevalent in that day. And I would like to believe that the South African State Theatre is also intentional in that in its heritage of having women spearheading the organization, it's still saying where there are bread and butter issues, where there are issues that affect our communities and societies, we have women who will lead us and ensure that there is gender parity and that that heritage of resilient, brave, and very intentional women is carried through in our organization and institutions. The rights of women are the rights of humans. And I think at times we, we tend to separate the rights of humans to specifically defining them to women rights. But then let us also then be cognizant that South Africa is a country that has got very high um, incidences of women rights abuses and transgressions. And therefore our, our productions continue to highlight the women's rights. For example, in Pelehi, directed by Chokofa Jamabele, she addressed reproductive rights where men would use muti or rituals to deny women the right to give birth to living children. So you would understand then that when, when you begin to look at productions like Pelehi, the rights of women, especially their reproductive rights, are protected in that production. You then also look at a production like Zoho, directed by a woman, Mabula Sitlaku, and written by a woman, Nabo Mashiani which then also begins to highlight the multifaceted woman that Charlotte Matlenke was. Her right to exist as a wife, her right to exist as a daughter, her right to exist as a ministry leader, her right to exist as a political activist. So you do not then confine the rights of women to specifically reproductive, but allow them to function in their multifaceted gifts in society. Further on, other productions that you would also want to recall that we have staged is also Metsi by Hannah Van Donner. You would have heard um, Tsieng Mkhoro directing That Night of Trance. And I want to also cite another production, uh, Shaka Zulu. Though directed by a man, I want to also highlight um, that a woman costume designer, Nobayeni Kaba, 
won a, 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 an a lady award for costume design so you are looking at the rights of women not just in productions but the rights of women to flourish in society and i believe the south african state theater has been fair and very much accommodation and i would like to even dare say lead the pack in ensuring that there is a vast representation of women in both their gifting across every production uspindile hlongwa ungu senior administrator aphinde abe i curator ye time of the writer festival kanye ne poetry africa festival Waba in Nanyales Kungo e Center for Creative Arts ngo 2011, Mva Wok Sevens and Esuela Sonke Dance Theatre Company, Ganyene Ega Artist Productions. Kwisi Kati Esile, Netuba Elisle Esiguru Manji. Lapo Sesukulegile, Futis is the Gaj and Jengabantu Besifazani, Nama Tuba Esinau, Singena Kunobuz in Yeza, Kobuli Hibetu. Ngebala letu na kukonke ogu ilunge lulomuitu. Jenge nyu vesi ya kwa zulu natali. Sia zika achangoli nilu etu. Olu usigo letu. Kulo nyaga besi bungaza imi nyaga enga mashumi nantanu. Kwa pasiswa ipolisi yoku seche nzeswa kolini lwesi zulu. Loku kutama rathe ngama festivali. Asanganiswa i Center for Creative Arts. Ase zenzele i gama ezwe ni longe. Ogubala kuo i Poetry Africa, i Time of the Writer, i Deben International Film Festival, i Jomba Contemporary Dance Experience, Cabaret and Beyond, Affluence Human Rights Festival, Ganyene Jazz Celebration Month. Lao onga ma festivali, akarambisayo i galelo la besifazani, Nezwi labo, egwe nzeni uguti, sibe ni South Africa, enkulule kile, futi sigwazi, ugo ze gaja, ngubuntu ubetu, singe na kono huzi nyeza. Kulo nyaka, sike sabuka, usipoga zichones, osebe nzisa, ubumbongi bake, ugu kuluma, ngodaba, lukumezeka, kwa bantu besifazani, emakaya. Le film yake isi hambe izizwe ngezizwe, ihamba ikoka izindondo, ezi shuga shukene, ngumsebe nzi omuhle, loku kusnigeza itemba, jenge Center for Creative Arts, uguti iksasa letu, lise zandlini, ezi gashe, magu kona izi mbongi, ezenza, izi manga, ezi ngaga, ngamazu nje, kupela, akukule, ukabanga, kumparati, kukukule, nesenzo, so munti uenza okubi. Kulo nyaga kui Poetry Africa sizobona unobile kaba utando fuze ulule gamshanzi Filipa ya Tivilias ulebo mashile uroshe kesta. Laba ngabe sifazane abasenzele igama elile kwezo ezi nkondo ezwe nilonke liga mtania baya ziwa kakulu nge galelo labo abale nzile umela nje ilunge lolo mtu uwe sifazane ilunge lunge lodo mtu wonke opilayo ezwi ni gaz. Laba angabe sifazane abase basha. Ogus letela nje itembu uti singaba pumele layo kwa kwe siwenzayo kandine ezwi letu likinile. Tina nje ngabantu upe sifazane asilindu uguti sizwe ngabanyo uguti singobani, siyapi, sibugega ganjani, sikoga ganjani. Tina Sizazi tinu kobo, uguti sinamandla nobushagani, futi sifonipa wonke umundu ngogwe zinga nange lunge lulake. Futi asizog vumela uguba basi tikilele pants. Isi zulu esi ishesiti, umundu mungle ngogu zaaz. It's for my mother and my grandmother. It's in ten parts. And I will just read three. One, my mother was a freedom fighter, not the usual uniformed one in positions of robust attention, not even a guerrilla mama fighting in the bush at the far end of the fringe. No machine gun in hand, no amulets around her neck. 
shaped in words like revolution. The exhibition, Women are the Architects of Society, is an extension of the significant unrecognized roles women have played in society. It highlights the milestones women have accomplished beyond the social constructs they navigate their way through on a daily basis. It challenges the narratives that society upholds of women and seeks to educate the audience to unlearn wrong thinking patterns about the existence of women. Well, firstly, I think it's very important for women to participate in the art sector because it increases the chance for equal representation. Um, and I think that obviously, if a space is male dominated, it might be desensitized to the importance of women being part of that space. So I think the involvement definitely changes the perspective around the kind of content that needs to be taken in, um, uh, the artwork that needs to be, you know, prioritized. So obviously, if I'm a woman and I'm running an art gallery, for example, I will have that conscience to think about other women because I understand how it feels and why it's important. Um, because I have a first-hand encounter of what it's like to be a woman. Um, so I think women participating in the creative sector definitely does increase the chances of women being given more opportunities um, to, to contribute their creative content and their artistic direction. And I think that uh, women have also contributed in the art sector um, by contributing their views, their responses, their thoughts about how they view life, social constructs, societal standards through their, their artwork. And I think that voice is important. You know, it's one thing when a man paints about women, but when a woman paints about women, then you, you get to experience that firsthand. I think that not entirely, even though right now there is a, um, there's a growing number of art, like, you know, organizations that are doing open calls for women. Um, uh, speak for themselves, you know, uh, there's very few female artists. So it's not a coincidence that it's like that. It's not, even, it's not a mistake because gender inequality is systematic. So um, I think that there's a lot of room for improvement uh, when it comes to women being given more opportunities, there's a lot of opportunities for, for growth in that sector because, you know, people have, it's not like they don't have, they're not capable of giving women more opportunities. They're just choosing to work with the artists that they're really used to dealing with, that they're more comfortable with, but they're not really opening up a bit more. So um, I think that, you know, to answer the question, it's still a work in progress. We're not there yet, but, you know, um, we still have a long way to go, you know, because if in, in most cases you find that when there's an exhibition, there's probably like only two female artists and then the rest are male, you know. So it speaks a lot to the dynamics around the, the kind of artworks that are, are taken in and stuff like that. So I think that... Um, if organizations are more intentional about identifying, documenting, and amplifying uh, the, partic the participation of women in the art sector, there will definitely be a, a difference. So I think we are, still, we are still getting there. We are not there yet, but we are getting there. There's a lot of practical things that government can do. There definitely is a budget for it. Um, Government can sponsor female-led companies that are in the art sector. They can sponsor female-led art projects. Um, they can open mandates for women to submit proposals for ideas that they have. A lot of women have ideas of projects they want to implement. The only problem is that maybe they have limited resources. Uh, but, you know, we can easily change that by sponsoring their ideas, their projects. 
and making it easier for them, you know, opening the floor to them to say, you know, um, here's the budget, tell us what do you think, you know? Um, and I think also if government is also more intentional about increasing the participation of women in the arts the way, whenever they are even, you know? So for example, um, there are many events that government does throughout the year, you know, I think that it's important for women to be maybe given um, first priority, maybe when there's events like, and more consistent, it shouldn't just be like a women's month thing that we only do because it's August, you know. Um, there are many things that happen throughout the year. One of the things that I, for example, um, is the, the building, uh, the Women's um, Museum in Pretoria, which is currently dormant. There's no activity happening there. That is an opportunity in itself for women artists to contribute their content. Um, and I think uh, another practical thing that government can do is to commission women artists more, you know. Um, like I mentioned, you know, there's a lot of buildings that are being erected, a lot of community development projects. So whenever those things happen, you can invite women artists to bring their artwork and pay them for that rather, you know. Um, those are, there are so many things that government can do. I mean, like the list is endless, you know, also just uh, including the importance of women, uh, of bridging the gap between male and women artists in the white paper is a way of, you know, implementing that change. Uh, because we can talk and talk about it, but you know, there's some kind of action that needs to be implemented for it to take place. And also, just dismantling the the systematic undervaluing of the creative sector in our education system. You know, um, I think that unfortunately, our education system kind of conditions people to think that you know, when you're an artist, you're not worth contributing to the economy. So it doesn't become attractive to a lot of people. They start thinking that, you know, if I do this, am I going to make money? What's going to happen to me? You know, so I think um, government really needs to, to change that as well. I mean, there's a lot that I can say about that. There's a lot of room for improvement in our education system. Um, it's very sad to see a lot of creatives being forced to take other career paths. Um, which their brains are not even wired for. So I think that that's, a, that's one way of prioritizing uh, the growth of women in the art sector by also giving them bursaries as well, you know, um, so that maybe they're thinking of, you know, doing art. They don't have to think twice. They know that, okay, I can apply for this bursary. I don't have to worry about, you know, how am I going to be sponsored at home and things like that? That's one way of easing the pressure of them. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, there's so many examples, but I think those are some of the things that I think about that are practical that government can honestly do because there's really nothing that's stopping them from doing that. Through choral and Afrocentric melodies, Soho, the rise of Charlotte Manya Maklege, also suggest Maklege's imaginative childhood, her coming of age, her undying resistance and resilience, her bravery to travel the world as an artist in pursuit of a dream to empower the black child. Tsoho, the rise of Charlotte Mianya Maklege, is written by Nabo Mashiene and directed by Mapula Sitlaho. Obushe bendalo ubungazu bujilwane asib kandili nabanyi besfazani o habenwa kilum tulu. Mshazingu 28 kunwaba ubuhle bendalo ushielana inkundla no konaye, Theo Songtress, Zimbi ni makwetu, kanye no noma krestu. Written and directed by Bridget Mokoboya and Peter Human, Death of My Womb follows 24-year-old Zandile as she tries to embark on a journey from Kimberley to Johannesburg trying to find greener pastures, leaving behind her grandmother who in trying to assist her reach her goals refers her to an old friend, Gogo Pumzile. Upon Zandile's arrival, Gogo Pumzile learns of her sexuality and resents her for it. She is determined to change her.
Capture in Silence is written and directed by Mandla Innocent Masilela. This is a drama about the traumatic disorders of a 16-year-old girl who faces betrayal from a grandmother who re-navigates her life for an exchange of groceries, money, and a promise to a better life. Aimed at educating audiences about unpopular Zulu traditions, the piece skates on themes of dehumanization and loyalty. Everybody. My name is Mana Komba and I play Charlotte Six and Anna Manui on Tsuko, The Rise of Charlotte Manya Makweke. We are running from the 16th of October until the 31st of October. So please be sure to come and see the show. Don't miss out! Hi everyone, my name is Katla Hotokana, playing Charlotte One. Please come watch the for at South African State Theatre, Tuesday to Saturday at 7pm and on Sunday it's 3pm. Sanibonani, my name is Samatkono Mkono, I play Charlotte Five in Zoho. You can get your tickets for only 130 rand at web tickets and pick and pay. And we hope to see you on the next one.